What up? Well, I'm picking up where I left off last time, where I replaced the ass cover on the passenger seat for my 2004 Trailblazer, which is going into my 2003 Trailblazer. My 2003 did not come with a passenger power seat. It's just got the levers and shit that makes it move. And not only that, but the seat that I'm putting in my 2003 came from my 2004. So I've got a lot of shit to do to make this work, but it's all going to start with removing the passenger seat from my 2003. Let's do this shit. These covers can be dicks. The best thing I found is to actually press down on the cover as you're releasing the outboard tab. Meaning if you're doing the passenger side, it would be the tab on the right. If they break, it's not the end of the world. They just won't sit flush and they can get kicked off easy. So I've gotten in the habit of putting a towel over the door panel, whether they're custom doors like mine or they're just regular doors. It just lowers the chance of one of those metal frame rails making contact with the plastic because usually the metal frame rail wins and it scratches the fuck out of the plastic. Alright, so I'm in the passenger seat of my 2003 which came with the manual seat. My 03 was pre-wired for a power seat but that was based out of a 2003. Remember, I'm putting the power seat in from Minty Green, which was a 2004. So even though my 2003 never had a passenger power seat, it did have a connector for one. It should be obvious that the connector for the 2003 that's in my truck is different than the connector for the 2004, which came out of Minty Green. I know that there's four wires in the connector, but as far as how many were actually used, well, I don't know. But the seat that came out of Minty Green was a 16 wire connector and seven of those wires were used. So how can we make the 2004 seat work with the 2003 wiring? Well, let's take a look at how them shits are wired up. Okay, so on the left here, we have the 2003 Trailblazer passenger front seat diagram. On the right, the 2004 Trailblazer. This is a very simplified version of the diagram. Don't use this for any kind of diagnostic. It gets a little bit more complicated than that. In my 2003, there were two variants of the passenger power seat. It's with heat and without heat. And by heat, I mean heated seats, which I'm not keeping in this project. Now, both variants use this connector 314, which is what I have in my 03. So it turns out, at least for 2003, they all came with those four wires on the truck side of the connector. On the seat side of the connector, they may have used four or they may have used two depending if you had heat or without heat. If you had heat, all four wires were used because that connector plugged into the passenger memory seat module. What it would do is it would take inputs from the seat adjuster switch and the lumber switch and then it would control outputs to move the lumber motors or the seat motors. If you did not have heated seats, the seat connector only had two wires plugged in. That would be the constant B plus for you know battery positive voltage and ground. Those circuits would go to the seat switch as well as the lumber switch and those two switches would control the seat motors or the lumber motors. And I say motors because 2003 had two lumber motors in the power seats. So let's fast forward 12 months. We're now in a 2004 Trailblazer passenger front seat diagram. Here we have connector C314 again. It's a 16 wire connector and in the case of minty green only seven of those wires were used. We had seven wires on the truck side of the connector and seven wires on the seat side of the connector. Regardless if it had heated seats or not, these two pins are going to be the same. We're going to have pin F, which is going to be our power. Pin A is our ground. Power is going to go through the seat harness. It's going to put power to the seat switch. It's also going to put power to the lumber motor switch. Motor, as in one. All right, so think about this. All I want is the power seat to work in my 2003 using a seat from a 2004. So all I should need is pin F power 
and pin A ground. That should make all the seat motors as well as the lumber thing work. How can I get that? Well, come back to 2003. Regardless if the 03 had manual seat, memory seat, just a standard power seat, it doesn't matter. We can get the same power and ground circuits right from connector C314. So by taking power and ground and wiring them to power and ground, this power seat will work, provided that all the internals work. So to make this modification possible, all I'm gonna to have to do is flip flop some pins around from one connector to another and everything will work. Pretty cool. Now what if I wanted the heated seat from the 2004 to work in my 2003? It wouldn't work. The other five wires that are in minty green C connector, they don't exist in the 2003. Very crude drawing here. We have the driver's door module which has the heated seat switch and the passenger door module which also has a heated seat switch. Those modules communicate over data. So a message from the passenger door module that the passenger heated seat has been requested. It's going to go over data. In 2003, that data message is going to be read by the passenger memory seat module. And the passenger memory seat module is what controls the heated seats in 2003. And I guess 2002, but I didn't look it up, so don't take my word on that. In the case of a 2004, that data message that the passenger heated seat has been requested from the passenger door module gets sent over data to the driver's memory seat module which then sends signals to the pins B, C, D, E, and G as shown here in this diagram. These are the five pins. You're probably going to see me de-pin all these from a uh, connector and minty green seat. So these extra five wires in connector 314 from my 04 are just for heated seat stuff. In either case, my 2003 does not have a memory seat module. The amount of work it would take to get heated seats to work in my 2003 is far beyond what I would want to do, even if I could like open up the sunroof and throw money out. One of those rap guys said one time, money ain't a thing. Even if money wasn't a thing, this would be a big deal. And I know this because I did a little trial and error to see if I could get a memory module to do anything without being on the data stream and too long didn't watch, it doesn't work. Remember I made fun of people for putting on my grind in their name on like Facebook and shit? Well, today's January 25th, I think. This project was started like four months ago. So, you know. Actually, where's that thing that tells you what today is? Yeah, today's the 26th. So enough of this, let's wire this thing up. So, long story short, all I'm gonna need is the power and ground out of here. So that's what I'm gonna do. jerk. Now I'm never going to wire up seat heaters in this thing, so I can just pull these extra pins out. I think what I'm going to do is not disturb these other circuits. I'll just put this cap back on here. I think what I will do is 
kind of pretty this thing up a little bit. This is in split loom. This is what they put in from the factory, so I just left it in there. But kind of prettied it up a little bit. These connectors right here, they're not going to get in any trouble. And uh, the seat should be able to move as intended. Let me clean this shit up. We'll be ready to install. So no real tips for the seat going back in. It's pretty much the same as taking it out. You got to be careful getting it in so you don't scratch nothing. Once you get the seat halfway situated, you go ahead and plug your connector in. That's my finger. So you probably can't see this, but I'm just plugging this connector in. Then you can move it back a little bit. As you can see, the power seat works. First shot, put your one bolt, one nut on. seat forward with two nuts on in the back and that's pretty much a wrap. Well, it's kind of hard to show you that lumber works, but lumber works. Hot damn. So yeah, this was pretty cool. Making things work, things that weren't, I guess, supposed to just be plug-in shits, made the shit work. Pretty awesome. Now, when I got this passenger seat wired up and installed, I did take a little bit of footage, but I still didn't have a driver's seat in there, and it doesn't really make sense to show off a car with, like, three seats in it. That's, like, okay, whatever. There's a reason that the driver's seat wasn't in there. The driver's seat needed pretty much an overhaul. Spoiler alert, I got everything to work. I have a driver's memory seat bottom that is not controlled by the memory seat module with a lot of 04 parts, but with the dual lumber motors just because, well, it's 03, I'm living it up, right? And I go in a little bit showing how to do the all-thread mod so that I don't break the seat trim panel anymore. I actually broke the one that I modified, so I bought another and actually saved like, I don't know, 80 bucks in the process. Pretty cool. So for my O3, next couple videos are all gonna be seat related. It is what it is. If you don't like it, I don't really care. I don't cater to anyone but myself. Anyway, I had a lot of fun doing this project. It might not seem like much, but learning things like the different variants of the 2003 power seats and making a four work in a three with different connectors, but still have it be plug and play. Just, just something I really enjoyed doing. So anyway, thanks for watching. You like what you see, subscribe. Still every day, one tick closer to 50K. Ladies and gentlemen, what's good in the hood? 2015, Silverado, 49,000 miles. Thing looks like it's been underwater for like the last, I don't know, four years. This truck sucks. Even with all its bells and whistles. Fuck this truck. Something to discuss. If I was to be dating in 2019, there is one thing that would now be one of the top three deal breakers. Women who fucking make a conscious choice to wear a three button collared shirt. Nothing says I don't give a fuck how I look or if people find me attractive more than a three button collar shirt on a woman. Stop doing that shit. First of all, three button collared shirts suck no matter who the fuck you are. My kid has to wear the shit for school. I think he looks like a fucking asshole when he wears it. But what woman would wake up and go through her wardrobe and not only have a fucking three button collared shirt but choose to wear that over something more 
feminine. We're not talking like it's part of a uniform. We're talking about just casual dress. Hey, I think I'm gonna wear this three button collared shirt today. Maybe I can even see it where it's like laundry day so she grabs her dude shirt and wears that. That's fine. Well, it's not fine, but that's acceptable. We'll, we'll pretend that shit doesn't happen. I don't know, maybe the best part about a woman is like, you know, womanly features of a woman. You want something that'll highlight those features, not hide them behind three buttons and a fucking collar. And that's just, fuck man. I can understand, like I said, if it's a work uniform, you gotta, you gotta dress the part, that's fine. But women that would make a conscious effort to um, equip herself with a three button collared shirt. Fuck, no, we're not a match, you know what I mean? Swipe up or whatever the fuck you guys do with your stupid online dating. Which, by the way, I don't know why people that are in my age bracket have a hard time listening to me on shit when we discuss things like this. They say things like, I can't meet a girl. Like, dude, I would go online, man. You don't know what it's like, man. I do know what it's like, and I know that, where am I gonna meet a fucking girl in 2019? If I was dating again, I would, Immediately, it would be the internet. And just to get all the deal breakers out of the way. Like if a girl has to sleep with like an animal. First of all, if a girl lets an animal up on the on her bed, fuck you. Chances are they're nuts. I don't want no parts of that shit. There ain't no fucking animal gonna sleep with me. Have little Skippy up there in the bed farting all night. Man, fuck all that, you know what I mean? I saw a girl today wearing a three button collar and I just thought, man. She looks so good when she dresses like a normal woman, casually. Why would she make this effort to like not be attractive?